So what is our new idea? So we want to look at uh, partition in a different way. For that, uh, there is a there is a diagrammatic representation of a partition of an integer, which is called Ferris diagram, okay, or Ferris shape. Now this is also called Young's diagram. Uh, it's also called uh, Young's diagram. In many books, you will see only Young's diagram, okay? Because Young has done much more work and then made what's called. We will look into it uh, in a future uh, lectures. Uh, we will look at uh, Young's uh, table, uh, you know, tableau. So we we'll look at standard uh, Young tableau, non-standard Young tableau, and you know, weak tableau. Many the kind of things are there. We will look at some of these things later, but uh, not at the moment. Okay. So we will look at what is called Ferrer shape or Young's diagram. And it is as follows. Suppose you are given a partition of, let us say, 10, right? So let's say a partition of 10 is uh, mu is equal to 5, comma 3, comma 2, right? So partition of 10 into three parts. Now I can represent this partition as follows. So for, you know, for every unit, I will put as in a unit square, let's say. I take a unit square, right? So the unit square represents one, let's say. Now to represent five, right, as part of the partition mu, I represent, I put five uh, unit squares in a row left justified. Okay, so all of them will sit at the leftmost part. So there are there are five of them. So this corresponds to five in our partition. Then in the next row of the shape right in the diagram i will put exactly three unit squares again left justified right? and since the last part uh, in the integer partition is two i will put two squares at the end so i have now 10 unit squares all of them distributed like this the first line contains five next line contains three next line contains two all left justified So the area of this figure is now 10 unit squares and that is why, you know, we denote by, you know, like we said that the area of mu is equal to, right, the the number that it is partitioning, right. So if you are looking at Ferrer's shape, for example, the, the number of unit squares defines the area and therefore there is a reason and that is the reason we, we call, uh, you know, uh, uh, mu, the size of mu as area of mu. Now, okay, so here is the, uh, yeah, here is the partition of, so the figure that partitions uh, 10. Now let us look at the partitions, so there could be several partitions, so there could be several such figures, right, they will be distinct. So here are the partitions of 4, right, so Ferrer's diagrams of partitions of 4. So what is the first partition? The first partition represents the partition 4. The second one represents the partition 3, comma 1. The third diagram represents the partition 2, comma 2. The fourth diagram represents the partition 2, comma 1, comma 1. Right? And the last diagram represents the partition 1, comma 1, comma 1, comma 1. Right? And these are precisely the five different partitions of 4. So they correspond to these figures. Right? So the Ferrer's diagram represents the partitions of uh, uh, numbers like this. Now, a formal definition of the Ferrer's diagram can be given as follows. So FD of mu is the set of all i comma j in n cross n, right? Such that 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to k and 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to mu i. So this makes it left justified and top uh, justified right so it, it's going to appear in the top left corner of whatever you are looking at so the Ferrer's diagram is going to be exactly like this so uh, this is something we already observed that uh, if a box has unit area then the area of uh, the Ferrer's diagram of mu is the area of mu 
which is the uh, number that it is partitioning. Okay. Now here is another uh, very interesting observation. So let us look at the partition of 21. Okay. So we are looking at the partitions of 21. So here is a specific partition of 21 that I am giving, right? So the partition of 21 is as follows. Uh, it's 9, 6, 3, 2, 1. So there are 9 boxes in the first row, 6 boxes in the second row, 3 boxes in the third row, 2 boxes in the fourth row and 1 box in the final row. Now, <clears throat> here is another partition of uh, 21 again. But now here, uh, you know, so it's a partition, let's say mu dash, where the first row has exactly five uh, boxes, second row has four elements, third row has three, then two, 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 and one, one, one. Right? Can you find a relation between these two figures? If you look at these two figures, you will notice that suppose you take the you know the line right, the line goes from the uh, northwest corner to the southeast corner right that line right so 45 degree and you know put that line on the diagonal right like this and then take the reflection. Uh, of this onto both sides, right? The reflection with a mirror. You are going to precisely get the same uh, figure that is on the right hand side. Okay. So I am going to get the same figure on the right hand side. Okay. Okay, so just uh, verify it yourself. These figures are in uh, one to one correspondence with this uh, reflection. So you take any figure here to a reflection, you will get another figure here, and those the you know that figure will again be a partition of the same number that you are looking at. So I take this figure, take a reflection, I will get a partition here. Now, can you see something else that is relating these two? Okay. So, what relates these two is that in the first case, we had a partition of 21 into 5 parts. Now, when you take the reflection, you know, this column becomes the, the, the row, first row here. So, therefore, this is a partition where the largest part because the top row is 5 because that is going to be the first row, right? So now we see that you now the bijection from that we were trying to prove like P star of n comma k to right the set containing you know uh, the set that counts uh, that is counted by P star of n k to P of n k, right? Is just a reflection technique in our diagram, right? So you take this, take the reflection, you will get a partition, another partition, where the uh, number of parts here becomes the largest part, and uh, vice versa, right? The the number of parts here becomes the largest part here. So what we have observed is that length of mu, right? The mu be the first partition is mu1 dash right the first element of mu dash and similarly and length of uh, mu dash is equal to the first part of mu right mu1 which is 9 right so this is equal to 9 okay so <clears throat> 
so this gives a pictorial proof that uh, that p star of uh, n comma k is equal to p of n comma k uh, Now, let us uh, look at a couple of more things. We want to prove the recursion formula, right? So the recursion formula that we wrote for P and K can be proved using the Farage diagram again. So what is the proof? So here is the proof, right? So this picture represents the proof. So you have... Uh, you have, uh, let us say, the Farage diagram, right? And suppose, you know, the, the first column, right? I mean, you know, first, uh, first column uh, is the largest column that in the sense that there is, there is some box, right? The, the, the last row, for example, is a single term, right? So this guy is a single term. So what I do, I just remove this guy from uh, the picture and I will get a picture here. Now what is the property of this picture? This picture is a partition of n minus 1 because the area has reduced by 1 because I removed one unit cell. And uh, the number of parts has reduced by 1 because I removed one row. And therefore it's a partition of, uh, this represents the partition of n minus 1 into k minus 1 blocks, right? Now, if I have any partition here, I can just add one at the bottommost part uh, of the first column and I will get a partition here where the last uh, row is a single uh, cell, right? So therefore, there is a bijection. Similarly, if you have, uh, you know, at least Two elements in the last row, then therefore two columns are full full columns. So what I can do is that I can remove the entire first column from this, right? Then I will get a uh, Farage diagram here where the the number of uh, uh, rows are the same because I have only removed the first column, but the second column is also full. So it's a partition of n minus k because I have removed exactly, so there are k rows here, they so have removed exactly k cells and uh, I get n minus k uh, cells here remaining. So it's a partition of n minus k into exactly k blocks, right? So that is the uh, proof of the recursion. And this and these two are disjoint because, you know, these figures does not have this thing here and uh, uh, they are disjoint and therefore we can add them. Okay, so uh, here is another uh, homework question for you. So consider uh, a rectangular grid uh, with, uh, let's say, A columns and B rows. Okay, so here are, uh, here is the grid where you have uh, column number one, column number two, etc column number A and uh, row number 1 to B. Okay. So take a, a rectangular grid with A columns and B rows. Now what we are looking at pre previously was uh, Farage diagrams. Now Farage diagrams are uh, you know, left and top justified. So let us see how many such Farage diagrams can sit inside this box that we are looking at. Right. So here is the grid uh, shaped box and in this box we want to see how many Farage diagrams can be put inside right? they, they fit completely inside so can you count the number of such Farage diagrams that sit inside this box of size uh, a cross b right so this is a homework and uh, try to find uh, a proof by finding a bijection to uh, some said that you already know how to count.